Nicole sat in the warm SUV as her family made their way down to the ferry. She was slightly annoyed, but secretly also somewhat excited, but made sure to hide that fact from anyone. She and her family were about to spend a week at her stepmother's estate, on one of the islands off the coast of Alaska. Her father had remarried last year to a much younger woman that had no children of her own. Rachel, Nicole's new stepmother, was nice for the most part. She was in her mid to late thirties, in shape and pretty. Nicole liked her much more when Rachel was dating her father, long distance, but expectations fell short when they actually met and they would continue to decline the more that she was around her. Not that there was necessarily anything wrong with Rachel, it was just that she wasn't her mother. Nicole's father, Terry, was a pilot for one of the major airlines out of Atlanta. Supposedly, the two met on a flight going across the country, and the rest is history. Nicole was still trying to process the trauma of her late mother passing when her father had remarried. Nicole secretly felt that her father had moved on just a bit too quickly, that he didn't fully grieve the sudden and tragic death of his wife enough, but she didn't vocalize any complaints for simplicity's sake. She wasn't going to keep her dad from moving on just because she wasn't ready yet. It wouldn't have been fair. Sitting in the seat next to Nicole was her brother, Jake. Jake was about seven. His eyes had been glued to his iPad, completely unaware of where he and his family were about to go, nor did he care. The age between the two wasn't terribly large, but it was just enough that neither sibling was able to fully connect to one another, especially at this time. Who's excited? A warm voice piped from the front seat. Glancing out of the front windshield, Nicole was able to see that they had reached the ferry dock. The ship itself wasn't that all impressive. The vessel looked old and boring. The dull worn colors mixed with the apparent lack of maintenance gave off a gloomy vibe for all of those about to board. The ship allowed you the option to bring your vehicle for a small additional charge, but this would be pointless for where they were going. The island that they were visiting had no roads. This is due to the fact that the island that they were going to visit was privately owned by Rachel and her family. This subtle fact hinted to Nicole that Rachel came from money, which in of itself isn't a terrible thing, but it does give context on what to expect on this island. If one has money to own a small private island, then surely the home and everything inside should reflect that of a life of luxury. Jake peeled his eyes from the brain rot emitting from the iPad and glanced over at the poor vessel. A brief look of disappointment hung in his countenance, but before he could say anything, Terry piped up again. All right, guys, let's get this party started, he said as he parked the SUV and unbuckled. Rachel gave a warm but brief smile. They exited the warm coverage of the SUV and entered the foggy room that covered the docking area. Mountainous pines seemed to hover in the distance surrounding the body of water. The water itself seemed to expand off into the horizon, with nothing to obstruct it, the end of which was surely infinite, perhaps even stretching to the end of the world. The smell of the dock emitted subtle tones of seawater and fish. An unpleasant smell, surely, but one that was certainly unforgettable. The air hung soft with fog, and brief beams of light coming from other vehicles pulling into the lot. The family took a few seconds to take in the sights before making their way on board. Terry extended his hands to both his children as they crossed the lot and to the boarding section of the ship. Both children, despite their age and attitude towards the whole situation, quickly grasped their father's hands without a second thought, nor complained. Rachel was left empty-handed, but wanted to fit in. She extended her hand to Nicole, who was the nearest to her but this fairly unknown figure, at least to Nicole, had yet to deserve this privilege. A moment passed and a shared glances between everyone put this situation to everyone's attention. Nicole felt a tight squeeze from her silent father, which translated between the two meaning, don't make a scene. Nicole reacted slowly by removing her spare hand from the warm dark pocket 
and embraced the grasp of the new woman. The moment only took less than 10 seconds, but to the trained eye, it was apparent that Nicole was not ready for this form of affection, at least with her mother's new replacement. The four, without missing a beat, proceeded to the dock and quickly boarded. The ship, oddly enough, was named the Manatee, which was accurate in regards to the appearance alone. Inside the ship were wooden benches that lined both the sides of the ship as well as the center section. The benches made the interior of the manatee look like an old church. The family quickly grabbed the front row of the ship in order to procure the obvious best seats in the house in regards to view. Various shipmates could be seen and heard checking various parts of the ship as other people slowly boarded. A low grumble and a vibration could be felt as the ship turned on. After a dozen or so people boarded, the ship eventually took off from the dock and entered into the fog-filled sea. Once at full speed, the name of the ship being called the Manatee made even more sense. This cow of a ship traveled no faster than 20 miles an hour. Nicole's eyes rolled in her head as she realized that this was going to take a while before she was able to reach the island home and connect to Wi-Fi. After an hour or so of navigating through the bleak fog, they finally reached the small group of islands and docked at the first one. The inhabitants of the ship quickly exited thanks to the cold weather and entered into one of the two buildings on the island. A small sign that said, Welcome to Windsor Island, with a 1950s style family immediately greeted those that departed the ship. Out of the two buildings, Rachel led the family to the first one which happened to be another docking port for her own personal boat. Inside, Rachel was greeted by a large older man, who had clearly known Rachel for quite some time. The two exchanged pleasantries as the rest of the family watched with half-hearted grins. The man handed Rachel her keys, and the exchange was over. Rachel handed the keys to Terry as a playful gesture. Surely, you know how to drive a boat, she said, laughing. Terry smiled back and glanced at the keys. My expertise is either cars or planes, but no boats, he said while handing back the keys. Ah, figures, she said as they made their way outside into the other side of the island. The family followed behind Rachel as she led them to her private boat that was docked in a fairly nice boathouse. This boat was greatly different than the manatee that they rode in on. This boat was much smaller, but what it lacked in size it made up for in luxury. This boat had leather seats and a heater, which was greatly appreciated by both children. Rachel started the boat and masterfully exited the boathouse and idled out of the island's marina. Once past the buoy, she hit the throttle, which caused the boat to jerk from acceleration. The speed of the boat was surprising, but Rachel's handling was even more impressive. It only took moments before her island emerged from the dense fog that concealed it so well. The island itself was another surprise. The size alone was impressive. At first glance, one would even say that this was the mainland due to the sheer size. The trees were equally as tall as those in most forests. This was no mere tiny piece of land. As the ship got closer to the island, a home could be seen not too far from the coastline. A wooden deck preceded the home which led up to a clear path leading to the house. Rachel decelerated and docked the boat, again with ease and knowledge of one who knows how to do such things, clearly the result of a childhood filled with such tasks. We're here, she said as she tied the final rope connecting the boat to the dock. The home was much closer in view. Despite the small distance from the home to the dock, one can easily tell that this home was no small building. Rachel came from serious money, and it showed. Terry had a small idea of what to expect, but this was something else. The bad attitudes from both kids evaporated, as they saw that this was no small cabin which had been told to them by their father, which in his defense, he had no idea. The home matched the same luxury of the boat that brought them there. Everyone smiled and looked at Rachel, which she gave up a sheepish smile and she gestured for the kids to run up ahead and check it out. Nicole and Jay carried their small bags and ran ahead. 
The dock was sturdy as they ran from its wooden boards to the gravel trail. The wet gravel gave slightly under each furious step of both children sprinting with excitement. The fog still hung in the air, but so did the pleasant smell of all the pine trees and foliage that seemed to be everywhere but on the trail. Terry and Rachel held hands and walked slowly in order to give them a minute to themselves as the kids explored this new vacation home. Do we need to give them a key or something? Terry asked as the pace slowed even more. No need. The house has no locks, at least on the exterior, Rachel said. My family owns this island, and there's no one else here. They shared a smile and embraced as they continued walking. Nicole and Jake reached the house. The home was made primarily from wooden logs and had multiple levels. The back deck that faced the water had a small hot tub, alongside a fire pit and a grill. The two climbed the stairs to the back deck and looked back to see Terry and Rachel, slowly making their way towards them. The view was spectacular, even with the fog obscuring most of it. Jake tried the door and, sure enough, it opened. Inside the home was already warm. The home was dark, but after a quick flick of lights, the beautiful house illuminated. Nicole checked her phone and saw that the house had Wi-Fi, but no password. However, she did notice that her phone did not have any service. But who cares? She had no need to call anyone. She connected to the Wi-Fi and sat on the couch. Jake continued to inspect the home with awe and excitement. About 10 minutes later, Terry and Rachel arrived at the back door. Terry's reaction was similar to both kids towards the home, while Rachel was obviously unfazed. Wow, I didn't realize you had such a nice estate, Terry said while giving Rachel a half hug. Terry and the kids made themselves comfortable while Rachel started going around the house to check up on things. The two kids went to the second floor and each found a room to claim as their own. The home was nice, but nothing inside was designed for kids. The rooms were bland in the eyes of children, but tasteful to those who had a more mature taste. The home lacked color and was quite modern even for a house on the shore. Jake picked the room across from Nicole despite there being plenty of rooms to choose from. He wanted his own room, obviously, but didn't want to stray too far from his older sister. Night eventually fell on the island, unlike Terry or his children had ever seen. This was the first time that either of them were able to experience the true view of the night sky. The sky was completely unpolluted by artificial light. For the first time, Nicole was able to glance at the sky and see the universe through a new perspective. This new perspective came at the cost that she didn't realize. The island, aside from the only human interference being the home, was completely dark. A new pitch of darkness that didn't even seem possible in nature. The moon provided some light, to a degree, but was no match for the monstrous trees that loomed overhead. Silent guardians that stood tall and reached wide, defending those below from the little light that the moon could produce. With such beauty also came a slight terror. Stepping outside past the small haven the home provided stood a realm of darkness and mystery. An island within an island, if you will. Knowing that they were alone on the island provided a slight comfort, but like most things, that comfort wouldn't last. The family spent the evening by the gaslit fire inside and enjoyed a meal that Rachel prepared. It was evident that Rachel was not used to cooking for more than one person, but the meal wasn't terrible. Most of the sides were microwavable, leaving little room for error while the main meal was slightly burned. The kids were polite enough not to mention the error and ate their food while Terry forced conversation. All right, kids, we have the island for a week. What do you guys want to do? Terry said optimistically. The family exchanged ideas of what to do while calmly eating. Jake mentioned something along the lines of playing video games while Nicole mentioned going on a walk tomorrow. Oh, a walk sounds fun. Maybe we could do that as a family? Terry inquired, trying hard not to come off as forcing the family to spend time together. 
I think a walk sounds great, Rachel followed. I have many things to show you guys. Terry grabbed Rachel's hand softly and smiled. Dinner slowly ended and everyone went on their own way. Nicole changed into her bathing suit and went out into the hot tub, while Jake sat by the fire playing on his iPad. The back patio overlooked the water, which wasn't completely obscured by the mighty trees. The moon danced liberally on the waves of the water, reflecting soft glints of light in the sea of darkness. The hot tub was steaming up through the cool night air when something caught Nicole's eye. For the briefest of moments, she could have sworn that she saw movement down by the docks. It was only for a second, but it looked as if someone walked in front of one of the waves. Had the moon been obscured, the waves wouldn't have revealed the moment, but Nicole's eyes didn't lie. She focused in on the movement and moved even closer to the edge of the hot tub, but who or whatever had gotten her attention was now lost in the darkness that surrounded the house. Weird, she thought. It only took a few seconds to realize that the island probably had natural life on it, like birds and even possibly a deer or so. Despite the uneasiness of the initial glimpse, this didn't warrant any concern. She immediately sat back down and relaxed, only hearing the soft wind wisp over the warm water. Nicole eventually came back inside, and Jake had gone to bed. Rachel and Terry were still up and sat on the couch by the fire. Hey, how was the hot tub? Terry asked. Nicole ignored the question and asked Rachel, What animals are on the island? Rachel tilted her head as if she was confused. What animals? Well, there are plenty of birds and little critters, but not much else. Why do you ask? Nicole shook her head. No reason, she smiled. The hot tub was great, she finally addressed. She walked past and left the new couple to themselves as she went off to shower for the night. The next morning arrived with startling brightness. The sun happened to rise in the direction of the water, filling the home with rich natural light causing most of the family to be awakened in a heavenly manner. Nicole was an early riser. She didn't wait for Jake or for her father to get up to start the day. She made herself a quick bowl of cereal and went outside. It was probably still seven or so, and she figured that she had a few hours to explore before anyone in her family would be awake. Nicole picked one of the pines that filled the huge island and started to climb it. She figured she could probably get a good ways up and maybe be able to look over the rest of the island, if she was lucky. However, after taking a quick break, sitting in the tree about 10 feet up or so, she heard the front door to the house open. She sat and saw Rachel leave the house. Nicole wasn't trained to hide, nor was she that concealed, but Rachel was completely unaware that she was in the tree. Rachel began to walk away from the house, past Nicole in the tree, and into the dense woods. That's kind of strange. Nicole sat silently as Rachel walked almost out of sight. She quickly jumped down and followed behind, keeping her barely in view. It didn't take Rachel long to traverse through the woods and arrive at a peculiar building. The building was dilapidated, the front part of the entrance almost collapsing completely but a single spire on the barely upright entrance told Nicole that this used to be a church. Rachel didn't enter inside, but stood just outside the opening. Rachel was motioning as if she was speaking, but the sheer distance between Nicole and Rachel made hearing anything impossible. What was she doing? Nicole got closer. The pure curiosity alone moved her body almost unwillingly closer to Rachel. The damp pine needles ridden the ground provided a perfect insulator, which allowed Nicole to get closer, while being nearly silent. It didn't take long for Nicole to be able to in fact confirm that her new stepmother was indeed speaking. Whether or not to another person, it didn't matter. It was still kind of creepy. Perhaps she was praying, Nicole thought. However, she crawled closer and was now able to hear what she was actually saying. I brought you a family this time. I remember how much you liked children, so I brought you two of them. 
The words struck Nicole in a way that told her that something was wrong. Incredibly wrong. Why was she saying this, and who was she talking to? Nicole laid motionless on the cold, damp ground as Rachel wrapped up whatever she was doing out here. Rachel spoke for a few more minutes and eventually left. Nicole was paralyzed. What was that about? She brought us to someone? Was she talking to God or something? The event was so bizarre and private that Nicole didn't know how to proceed. Her following Rachel was clearly an invasion of privacy, but the content of the conversation might warrant a complaint to her dad. Nicole sat up and began to head back to the house when she turned back to the old church. Perhaps a quick peek might solve all the questions here. Maybe there was a headstone she was talking to and this private moment was actually quite sweet. A peek inside would answer all questions, but was she brave enough? I know she said that we were alone on the island, but what if we weren't? What if there was someone here and Rachel had been lying? But what would she gain from this? Nicole got up and inched her way to the church, trying to steal a peek without actually entering inside. The cold, damp building gave very little view, especially from her angle. She would have to physically need to insert her head inside in order to see anything. She began to feel her blood beat in her head as she moved from one tree to another, trying her best to remain concealed on the off chance that there was in fact someone else looming inside. Before another thought could cross her mind, she heard a yell come from the direction of the house. Terry was calling her name. Nicole sighed, thankful she had an excuse to not enter the church. She quickly turned and went back to the house, but made sure to go back in a different direction to avoid suspicion. Nicole reached back to the house and saw her entire family waiting for her outside. There you are, Terry said. We didn't know where you went. Nicole didn't respond. Yeah, we tried calling you, but we don't have any service out here, Jake said. Sorry, I was climbing a tree, she said convincingly, considering half of it was true. Well, we're all ready for our hike, Rachel said. Will you be joining us? Rachel stared at Nicole, as if she was suspicious. Um, what if we just stayed inside today and played games or something? Nicole said, trying to suggest anything but going out into the woods with Rachel. Wait, I thought you wanted to go on a hike and see the rest of the island, Terry protested. This was going to be a fun family day for us. Jake, being the little twerp he was, piped in. Staying inside and playing games does sound fun. Ah, come on. I have many cool things to show you on this island. I'm dying to show you, Rachel said, still staring at Nicole. Well, we do have all week. Just promise that we get to do a family hike before we leave, Terry asked. This was unlike Terry. In the past, he was domineering, and even a bully at times. But the death of his late wife made him realize that his kids are all that he had left, and that he needed to change. So, this was him changing, him being understanding rather than forceful. Of course, he could have forced everyone to go on this hike, but the kids would have just resented him for it. A hike later this week sounds fun. I promise I'll go, Nicole said in hopes of buying some time. Terry was slightly defeated, but at least his family was glad that they were going to do something together. The day passed by slowly, especially for Nicole. She was dreading the night. The family spent the whole day playing card games and listening to music. Laughs were even shared between all members for a time being, including Nicole, who began to not worry about what she saw, but the thought still gnawed at the back of her head. What did Rachel mean? that whatever it was preferred kids, she thought. After dinner, Nicole tried to keep her distance. She tried to find a moment to speak to her dad without raising suspicion to Rachel, but Rachel stayed close, not letting Terry out of sight, it would seem. I'll talk to him in the morning, she thought. I'm sure that this was all just a big misunderstanding. Terry was good at clearing things up. 
Nicole spent the night again out on the back deck, inside the hot tub. This time she didn't have the fire pit on, making the back patio incredibly dark. The hot tub continued to bubble as Nicole's muscles began to relax. She dipped deeper into the hot tub, first to her shoulders and sliding down further, allowing the chlorinated water to rise up to her neck and then her chin. The further she went in, the less that she was burdened by any forms of thought. The night sky, unlike the night before, was concealed by the curtain of clouds. Their soft and heavy form blocked what little moon had to offer, making the night incredibly dark. It seemed that the darkness prevailed over what light this home had to offer. The warm bubbles tickled her chin, tempting her to submerge even more. It didn't take much convincing and she indulged in the silent offer of the warm water. She fully extended her body across the tub, the water now having covered her entire body and the top of her head, only leaving a small portion of her face exposed to the crisp air night. All thought and senses had escaped her. The only sound that she was able to hear happened to be the jets of the water, and even then, she ignored those. After some time, she jolted awake. It had become apparent that she had fallen asleep. She emerged from the warm grass that held her so smoothly. It didn't take her long to notice that the lights inside the house were no longer on. Unaware of the time, nor what anyone else was doing, she quickly jumped from the hot tub, wrapped herself in a towel, and entered the home. The house was silent as she quickly moved from downstairs to up to the guest bathroom. After a quick rinse in the shower, Nicole went to her room, but was unable to find any sleep. She was tired, but her mind was telling her that something was wrong, as if she left the stove on or perhaps some type of immediate danger lurked just outside of her conscious mind. Just for her sanity's sake, she decided to check up on her brother. It was just across the hall. Her body stretched slowly out of the warm bed and across the hall. Jake's bed was folded, but he was nowhere to be found. His iPad was not charging on the nightstand next to his bed, but rather placed randomly on the floor and was still on. Jake took great care of his stuff, even for a child, so this was unlike him. Not only that, but where was he? A quick walk down the stairs into her parents' room only confirmed the worst. The door was ajar but she was able to see inside that a lamp laid on the floor and that blood stained the carpet. She bursted into the room to find it empty, but what remained were the remnants of a terrible scene. Blood filled the bed and trailed itself outside of the room. Splatters and small flecks of blood lined some of the walls. The sheer amount alone was concerning, almost as if it was enough blood for two people, but something told her that it was only her father's. But the thing that worried her, more than the blood and what she had seen earlier, was the fact that she was now all alone on this dark and gruesome night. Something had happened while she was occupied in the hot tub. Something terrible. She knew had she been present inside while everything had happened, she would also have been gone. But that was the question. What happened? Anxiety was no longer a factor as fear had completely taken over. She walked silently to the front door, hoping that she would be able to at least fortify her position from within, but then realized that this wouldn't be possible. None of the doors leading into the home had locks. Her options were simple. Make her way down the long, dark stretch of path to the belt and pray that Rachel left the keys inside, or stay the night and wait for sunup before going anywhere alone. There was a third option, however, but this would require strength and bravery that she didn't possess. The third option was to go look for her family in the abandoned church. The task alone, even during the day, would render most grown adults fearful, causing most to avoid at all costs. But at night, a night with infinite darkness with no aid of light or companionship, would terrify anyone. Nicole quickly realized that she was now in a survival situation. 
She quickly went to the kitchen to find a knife, but conveniently, all knives and sharp objects had been removed. After digging for some time, she did find a pair of old scissors in one of the old junk drawers. One of the handles had been broken, but the two scissor blades themselves were still intact. She grabbed the scissors and clutched the blade downwards, ready to inflict whatever damage she could in order to save herself. While in the kitchen, trying to find anything else to help aid her get off this island, a soft sound echoed through the house. The sound of the front door, gently opening, sent jolts of terror throughout her body. Her mind was now on high alert. Nicole quickly hid behind the kitchen island before she was able to see who was entering the house. From the look of things, it was probably someone that she didn't want to see. However, curiosity ignited as her mind raced. A quick peek revealed that she was indeed correct about her late night visitor. Entering the front door was no person. The antlers on the bipedal humanoid were dark and broken. The face of this nightmarish creature had little features that matched humans, but was not far off. From what Nicole caught from the quick glimpse was that this thing didn't wear clothes, but it didn't appear to have a gender. Its face was tight and worn. Its nose had fallen off, revealing a wide hole just above its gnarled teeth. The height of this creature was the most unsettling feature, aside from its sharp fingers that dangled from its inhuman hands. The creature entered the home, as if it was trying to be silent. It left the door open behind it as it continued its way up the stairs straight to her room. Do I make a run for it, or should I try to hide it out and hopefully this godless creature leaves, she thought. Had she ignored her anxiety and didn't check up on her family, she would still be upstairs, unaware of this beast coming to get her. It didn't take long for the beast to ascend the stairs and find that Rachel wasn't there. A scream ripped throughout the house. Frustration had caused this Wendigo to no longer continue its stealthy mission, but now it was guided by frustration. The entire upstairs sounded as if it was being ripped apart, no doubt looking for Nicole. Tears began to fill Nicole's eyes as she knew a painful death was in store for her, but just not right now. Soft sobs escaped through her clutched mouth as her body experienced complete horror. Her time was numbered, and no one was going to be able to help extend that time except for her. The creature barreled its way down the stairs and back on the main floor. Nicole had contemplated moving, but fear had riddled her body and she was petrified. The Wendigo stood upright, expanding its compressed spine and began to inhale rapidly. Nicole knew right away what it was doing. Despite the creature not having a physical nose, she knew that it was trying to smell her. The creature continued to inhale shallow smells, which caused it to slowly make its way to the kitchen. It was going to find her. It was only a matter of time. Seeing how she was going to die a very painful death, Nicole's body just ignited with power and sprinted out from behind the island counter and out the back door under the patio. The movement was so quick that she thought just for a brief moment that the creature didn't see it. However, once she reached the patio stairs which led to the gravel, she heard the back door crack and splinter from something heavy hitting it. Once she reached the trail, she heard the door give and the lanky beast jolt off the patio and towards her direction. The night provided a thick darkness that Nicole was counting on. If this creature needed sight to hunt, then perhaps this was the best bet. The creature's speed was startling. She thought that since its size was so large, that it surely couldn't have moved as quickly as she could, but she was wrong. The beast propelled itself directly towards the thick brush and trees that obstructed it. Nicole was about halfway down to the dock when she felt a sharp slash on her back. The pain exploded on her back as she felt a swipe from the beast, causing her to be knocked over and for her to lose her breath. She landed face down, her bleeding back exposed to the thing. She winced while trying to breathe, expecting another slash to finish her life in a gruesome manner, but it didn't come. 
Instead, a firm grip on her shoulder had forced her to face the creature and turned her over. Standing above her was a monstrous creature. She was now close enough to smell the beast which made finding her breath nearly impossible. The monster reeked of decay and disease. The Wendigo bent down closer and grabbed her throat tightly. A single red glow could be seen coming from one of its eyes as it got closer. A scream of delight came from the Wendigo as it caught itself a delightful treat as it was savoring the moment. The beast could already imagine the sweet soft flesh it was about to enjoy. Nicole's cries were overpowered by the fact that she still couldn't breathe. Nicole tried to remove its death grip it had on her throat, but it only grasped it harder. She only had one option and no time to waste in doing so. She was going to pass out any second from lack of air, so she gripped the scissors she forgot she was holding and jammed them hard into the red glowing orb that hung inside the Wendigo's face. Blood immediately shot onto her face as the creature pushed her back. The scissors dung deep into its intended target, and the creature was now in great pain. Nicole lay on the ground, now able to get her breath back. The Wendigo stepped back into the woods and removed the scissors, but something was now different. Instead of immediately pouncing on her and shredding her to pieces, the Wendigo began to cry out. Nicole finally found her breath and watched as the Wendigo tried to finish what it started, but quickly noticed that it couldn't find her. It patted the ground around her, but it was quickly evident that the single glowing orb had been its last remaining eye, and it was now blinded. Her attack had paid off, but she was still bleeding and was very much still in danger. She remained as quiet as possible, as the Wendigo had lost its location of her and began searching off in the wrong direction, all the while still screaming in pain and frustration. When the Wendigo was a good distance away, Nicole quickly found her feet and continued silently towards the dock. The sound of small waves crashing on the cold dock provided some comfort, as a quick boat ride was the only thing keeping her away from safety. The darkness made it difficult to find the boat. Nicole felt it was now safe to take out her phone and use the flashlight feature, briefly mind you, to locate the boat and to get out of here. However, after a quick search, she found the rope which the boat was tied to, but she quickly found that the rope had been cut. Someone or something had cut the rope, removing any chance for anyone to leave the island. 